Bill Whitaker on how states are preparing for violence in their capitals. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on the events of January 6th, when an angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol and overwhelmed the Capitol Police. We wanted to know, are states prepared for violent protests on Inauguration Day? We spoke with Michigan's Attorney General, Dana Nessel. The FBI has warned of armed protests in every state. How severely are you taking that threat in Michigan? We're taking it extremely seriously. So there's been coordination with law enforcement at all levels, federal, state, municipal, local, all in this effort to combat what we see as potentially very dangerous protests coming to the Michigan Capitol uh, this weekend and beyond. So, so what precautions are you taking? Well, I think you're going to see a greatly increased presence of law enforcement between the state police, between local authorities, federal authorities. There's going to be a great deal of coordination, and they're going to do everything they can to keep our capital safe. They've now erected a, a six-foot fence to put all around the capital, the perimeter of the capital, to keep that safe. Of course, for me, my concern is what do you do when the Capitol building is open again? And then what precautions are you going to take? Are you still going to allow people to walk in with firearms, even if they're concealed? Are you still going to allow people to walk in with bags or, or backpacks that you're not going to, you know, explore to some extent? I, I understand that there was just legislation or restrictions passed on open carry in the, in the state capitol. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, and I think that will provide uh, less embarrassment to our state because you won't see uh, individuals who are members of militia organizations carrying long arms, you know, assault weapons, uh, so brazenly. USA! USA! What we saw last April, you had essentially an entire government building, the state capitol, taken over uh, by armed gunmen. Many of those individuals were actually involved in a plot to kidnap and execute the governor, the fact that you would still allow individuals to bring in not only firearms, but potentially explosive devices, to have no metal detectors, and to have no kind of process in place to ensure um, that great havoc can't be wrecked on our state capital is extremely reckless and irresponsible, in my opinion. Uh, and if I was a member of the legislature, I would be incredibly nervous. It's that serious? I have recommended to the legislators that I know that they go to, uh, you know, an army store and purchase uh, Kevlar vests, purchase helmets, perhaps gas masks. And these are the kinds of items now that our state legislators are having to purchase just to provide some sense of security to themselves. So we're hearing chatter about more violence in the days leading up to uh, the inauguration on the 20th. What, what are you hearing? Well, I'm hearing much of the same. Uh, you know, of course, this has really had to go underground at this point. Uh, and because social media platforms at long last have removed many of these organizations from their platforms, it's made it harder for them, which is a good thing. I mean, to make it as difficult as possible for people to know how, what, where, when you're going to be meeting up and what the plan is, uh, I think that's very, very helpful. But that chatter is still out there. That interest in causing a havoc, both in Washington, D.C. and at state capitals around the country, it's still there. And we still have to be very prepared for it, much more prepared uh, than they were in Washington, D.C. last week or that we were uh, in Lansing back in April.